Well, welcome to the Busted Knuckle East and Motorcycle Storage Spot. Got the Honda, Dynaglide, Triumph, Kawasaki. Uh, I guess if I uh, left the Jeep out, I could store two or three more. So this video is going to be a reply to Navy Thomas's video about Sirhan Sirhan trying to get out again <laughs> with some wild claims, three of them to be exact. Of course I do understand his defense attorneys do have to do their job and it is their job to get people to reconsider any minute details they can come up with to get their client either a new trial or to get their client to go free but that is what they're paid to do and they have to do a job but this one based on the story I read they are throwing dirt balls against the wall and hoping to get something to stick I mean, first off, they're making the claim that there's a tape recording somewhat 40 foot away, something like that. I mean, uh, we're not talking about latest and greatest digital technology. This is back in 1967, so I would debate even the quality of the recording being able to deduce all this supposed uh, sound of gunshots and get accuracy as to the count and to distinguish the echoes from everything else. So. That is their first claim that there were 13 shots fired. <laughs> and then they were also making the claim that I've heard many times, I think this has been going on since shortly after the assassination took place, that somehow he was under a CIA or some clandestine organization's mind control through hypnosis. And he couldn't help himself because he was hypnotized, so he was just like a robot following orders in the first place I have yet to see any convincing proof that hypnosis even exists if you're talking about some kind of state where you can uh, turn people robotic I mean I think just motivated people in a relaxed state given suggestions is about all it amounts to and if you don't give it a label like hypnosis basically it's just uh somebody's motivated to do something in their life like say quit smoking or something like that they go to a psychologist or a person that does hypnosis and they basically just uh, get them in a relaxed state and reinforce uh, what they already feel like they want to do anyway so um, I've still seen no valid proof that a hypnotic state is any different than or has its own significant difference to where you can detect if somebody's hypnotized or not I've never seen any kind of proof that it turns people into some kind of robots where you can get people now. I do remember as a young kid they would have these articles in the back of comic books where uh, you could supposedly buy this book and hypnotize women. They will fall head over heels for you. You'll get dates with the most beautiful woman in school, the most beautiful girl in school. She'll just fall head over heels because you'll through the techniques in this book you'll have her hypnotized and uh, I was not one of the ones that wasted whatever it was for that book maybe 895 or something like that uh, kind of knew that was a bunch of malarkey and a quick way to get parted with your money and the third claim is that there was another shooter behind Kennedy at the time Sir Hen was shooting and that the wounds came from the back well, if you read the original doctor's report, one of the shots went behind his ear and the other two shots were under Kennedy's armpit. And that would be just what you would expect if someone was coming towards you with a gun. You would put up your arm, your right arm, to try to defend yourself as you were being shot. So it seems like he turned slightly sideways and raised his arm up to... Uh, as if he was trying to block something, which is pretty logical. <laughs> and 
and as far as any other shooter there on the site existing, you have two very good witnesses. Two of the people that held Sirhan Sirhan, there was three total I think that held him down, but two of them were ex-football player Rosie Greer and uh, reporter George Plimpton, which are pretty well-known people. There was a third two, and then the official Kennedy's bodyguard, I guess, was standing over Kennedy, shielding him from any further shots. And these three guys had Sirhan pinned up against the wall. And I kind of think if there'd have been any other gunman around there, they would have pretty much been aware of it and been on him too. The only thing to me that even seems a bit strange about it is, is it is one of those uh, things to where coincidence kind of works out a certain way unexpectedly because he wasn't originally supposed to, uh, after the speech, Kennedy was not supposed to cut through that kitchen to go talk to more reporters. They originally had him go in a different way and then at the last minute there was a change there. So it seems by Sirhan Sirhan's testimony in his original trial where he actually made a confession and said he had actually plotted to do this for 20 years that uh, he had just brought a gun to work because he had actually worked there at the restaurant, um, at the motel, hotel, whatever it was. and. Uh, just on the chance that he might get to be close to him and then it worked out with him working in the kitchen and Kennedy cutting through that he was like right there where he could carry it out. That's the only thing to me that just seems like an ill twist of fate to where somebody works that long and then the circumstances just kind of helped them carry out whatever plot they had.